It was a little over five years ago uh, that I went in for a routine lab and uh, we found out that I was losing kidney function. And uh, the doctor put me on uh, a number of medications, uh, but it was a gradual uh, decline of the function of my kidneys. In anticipation of what we knew what was coming, which was my kidneys were gonna fail, uh, I went in and had surgery done on my left arm to put in a fistula, a port, so that they could do dialysis. And uh, I was put on the transplant list uh, at Georgetown and Johns Hopkins. I started about uh, two and a half years uh, in uh, to do the dialysis. And at first I, I was doing pretty well, but uh, about six, eight months in, um, my body started to uh, react badly to the dialysis and uh, uh, I started having problems. I wasn't able to sleep. Uh, I was averaging about an hour and a half of sleep a night for over a year. And my uh, blood pressure would regularly go to 240 over 120. Uh, all of that was telling me that something was going to go uh, pretty soon. Our family has known the Puckett family for quite a few years, being involved in Emanuel's choir. Uh, I have noticed over the past year or so, Brooks uh, being not as active, not around as much, and noticed um, last November uh, just him being wiped out, really tired, and in fact somewhat jaundiced. With Brooks being so sick, um, the Lord led in my heart to um, ask what the process was and to see if there was a possibility for me to possibly donate one of my kidneys to Brooks. Um, knowing that he was so sick and having dialysis three to four times a week um, just made quality of life very poorly. And if I was a candidate, and could offer um, new life, then um, I was willing to go through the test to see if it was possible. The day that I found out that Cheryl uh, was willing to give me her kidney, I was uh, at church and I was not doing very well. I was feeling really sick. And my wife, Maribeth, was having a conversation with Cheryl. And I was giving her the high sign that we needed to get out of there and uh, not realizing that what Cheryl was, was just saying and doing. Uh, and when Maribeth got in the car, she said, do you realize what Cheryl and I were talking about? And I said, no. And she said, she saw you with Chase and the Lord laid it on her heart that she could help you and she'd like to give you a kidney. And uh, she wants to know who the, the transplant coordinators are at Hopkins and Georgetown so that she can go through the process. And uh, I was flabbergasted. I, I couldn't imagine that someone would be willing to come up and, and make that offer. So I sent an email to Cheryl with the names of the coordinators at uh, Hopkins and Georgetown and she took the ball and ran with it immediately. Conversations with um, Brooks and Maribeth were spent mostly on um, emails or Facebook, but uh, last Easter um, I told them I had made contact with um, Johns Hopkins and Georgetown University Hospital, and the process was to begin um, the day after Easter. As it turned out, not only was it a miraculous event to have somebody come up and say, uh, I'm willing to give you a kidney, but it also turned out that she was a 100% compatible donor and uh, that, uh, that it was an absolutely best case scenario, the kidney that she was willing to give me. Yeah, I believe the Lord uh, does some of the most remarkable works in your life when you're going through something that uh, is a real struggle. and. Uh, this whole process was a real struggle for me uh, because I, I knew that uh, I was uh, dying. And uh, it uh, definitely uh, shows you that you can't rely on yourself and that you have to go to the Lord. 
the surgery was set for the end of August. Um, we were delighted that we had a countdown day. We um, were able to share uh, out loud um, with our family and friends and um, begin the process of August 28th. Um, both families were excited and um, somewhat cautious. God worked in my heart and in my life um, over the past year leading up to the transplant and showing me that He's in control. I need to have an open heart and mind and ears and know that He will speak to me, whether it's through a book, uh, um, a friend, and He's in control, and I need to continue to trust in Him daily for my daily needs. The night before surgery, um, the Puckets and the ushers checked into our hotels in uh, Baltimore and went to the Inner Harbor for dinner. The evening was beautiful. Um, there were many tears shed, um, knowing what was going to happen the next 24 hours, but um, a great moment to share together. Um, the four of us. Well, the day of the surgery, uh, as they do in surgery, especially very long surgeries, they like to do it real early in the morning. And uh, the thing I remember the most was that uh, there were 30 people in the waiting room praying for me. Most of them were uh, people here from Emmanuel. And uh, the church family uh, coming around us and praying for us, lifting us up in prayer was just uh, stunning, especially that early in the morning, you know, that far away up in Baltimore. The afternoon after surgery, the nurses want to get you up and get you moving, and my chore for the afternoon was to take a walk, and decided to take a walk towards Brooks' room, and um, as I was rounding the corner, um, he was on his way out of his room for a walk, and what a uh, a sight that was to see him up, to see um, him with color and um, family standing around him, um, just knew that it was worth it. I just gave her a big hug and told her, thank you, you saved my life. And um, I don't think we said much more than that. It was just, uh, um, it was a very touching moment because uh, literally, uh, what she did uh, saved me. Since the surgery, the most notable thing that I've been able to reflect on uh, is the way my family has been drawn closer together by all this. I think probably the greatest joy is being able to uh, get down on the floor and roll around with my two-year-old grandson and play with him and and uh, marvel at how he's growing up and developing and seeing my children growing and prospering and all of those things are just so much sweeter. I was also really touched by the way that the Emanuel family just rallied around our family and there were hundreds of people that uh, were praying for us and um, following us on Facebook and on, uh, on the Caring Bridge page. Uh, the, it just uh, was really overwhelming to see that kind of support uh, and to see the body of Christ uh, and, and how it works. Being able to share my experience with those I interact with are seeing um, a new side. They've never seen anyone necessarily give life to another person in this aspect and uh, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm able to share that and share that it's through Christ that I'm able to, to do this and know that would the Lord have taken my life and you know kept Brooks alive that was a risk I was willing to take.